all right guys welcome back to ask nk and so i have uh some stuff which i would like to share with you guys today and it is something that you've probably have heard of before or maybe this is going to be like the first time which you're thinking or seeing that something like this exists but then i'll go ahead and show you what it is we'll talk about where and where these things have loopholes and also we're all going to you know talk about if it is something you need to invest into or if it's something you should let go and for today's video we'll be looking at three different sculpting apps which are uh, based online so it simply means that they would work on your web browser and from there we're going to talk about who owns what right and uh, what software is actually or what which of the sculpting tools is actually best for you to make use of and so kicking off we're going to start with the first one which is from uh, Sketchfab and it is called Sculptfab. And so Sculptfab is something that has been made available by the guys at Sketchfab. So it is a sculpting tool or a sculpting app which you can use to, you know, make your sculpts. You can also play with the cameras, you can import your files, you can uh, export your files, you can change the background and just do a few of this stuff. It has a much more refined and cleaner ui so once you want to start sculpting you know you can just go ahead and start sculpting like this you can turn on the uh, symmetry just in case you want to use symmetry and so once you start making those sculpts there let me just go ahead and make sure my symmetry is there okay i cannot really see where the symmetry is applying okay good so once you start making this sculpt like this you would be able to see that you have symmetry turned on and you can see all these sets of brushes here that you can make use of very straightforward minimal ui something that you can work with especially if you want to just create something really quick and easy now the next one which we're going to look at is a, a new one which is called strata sculpt strata sculpt is also a 3d sculpting tool and once you come over to the website here which is uh, strata.com forward slash strata sculpt 3d modeling you will be able to see uh, a handful of information okay you're going to see some guides on how you can make use of the sculpting tool how you can go ahead and you know play with the camera change the brushes do your rendering inside here do your texture painting and all that fun stuff and so how you can get on with it is once you come over to the website i'm going to put the link in the description so you don't have to worry about that you can come through and click on start using sculpt 3d now so once you come over to the part where you've loaded up your uh, strata sculpt you would find a, a much more defined not really defined in this sense but a much more uh, richer ui and if i make a comparison between this and this other one you're going to see that here we have more of a full frame while on these other parts we have more uh tools to work with so this simply says or this simply suggests to us that we can actually achieve a little bit more from a tool like this and by default your symmetry is turned on just like uh you can do with zbrush and one cool thing to note is all of the shortcut keys not shortcut all of the navigational keys that you can you know take away from zbrush you can also use them directly here so you don't need to learn a new navigational key control the same way where you hold down control and use the right mouse button to you know zoom is actually the same way you can do that here the same way you do that in zbrush and the same way where you can hold down alt and use the right mouse uh, button to you know navigate and once you leave the alt button you can zoom is also the same way you can work directly here you can still rotate this around and from the file menu you can you know import your object and also export as obj you can still save as stl for the most part on the same menu you can be able to add other uh, objects as well you can undo and redo the history you can max out how much undo you want and how much uh, redo you would want to get you can change the background you can play with the camera you can get a turntable and this particular feature that has to do with the tablet um, pressure or the pen pressure is a part that i love so much if we come over to this uh, other part you will also see that we have a pressure for reduce and it is the default for the wacom tab but then we don't really have uh, 
of that control that we would really really want to get we have something like this for pressure intensity and and radius but over here we have um where you can you know increase this and reduce this depending on what you want to go for the language is okay and you can see a lot more languages which you can find from here you have the ui i think this is broken okay it's not you have the ui where it simply means that you can come through and change the color which you want to have so i'm just going to go ahead and use my mouse and you know change the color which i want to have for the ui um, kind of similar to what you can get with ZBrush. The only difference is ZBrush has uh, UIs that are already pre-designed and you know you can go ahead and re-customize this UI yourself. Now before we go ahead and talk about these other parts, before we go ahead and talk about this other part, I would like to read out something so that you can uh, be in the knowing of what these tool or where this tool comes from. So it says the Stratascope 3D is based off or is based on the Sculpt GL uh, work which is done by Stefan Giner. Okay, I'm sorry if I muddled the name. I'm just going to put it in the description and also put it on the screen. Okay, so what this suggests is this tool is not originally created by the guys at Strat at Strata. So what this suggests is that this tool is not originally created by the guys at Strata. It simply means that this tool existed somewhere, probably uh, in a repository or a GitHub or somewhere. And so these guys decided to, you know, you know, get it out of the, get it from there, you know, and edit it and make it uh, to their own liking because it's free and it's online, so you can do whatever you want to do with it. So, and if you want to make use of the original tool, which is the Scope GL. You can find that here, which simply means you have to go to uh, stefanginner.com forward slash uh, GL. And if we come over to the home page, you would also see a much more uh, revealing information about the Sculpt Fab, which is made available by the guys at Sketchfab. So it simply says that uh, Sculpt GL is a digital sculpting web app. Okay, with open source available on GitHub. And if you look down here, it says Sketchfab made a fork of the old Scope GL version with a new design called Scope Fab. Okay, so the navigation is relatively the same. It has the same set of brushes like we can get on Strata. And you can see that I have my symmetry turned on. So if you want to start modifying or let's say you want to start sculpting, you can go ahead and you know pick up your brush and then you can just simply start sculpting directly from uh, here. So you can smooth by simply uh, holding down shift to do your smoothing. And if you want to invert your brush at any point, you can simply hold down alt on your keyboard, you know, and just invert the brush. Okay, so uh, if you want to change this brush at any point in time, let's say you're not want, you don't want to make use of this brush, you can come through, find the available brushes that are here. You can use the move brush to you know move objects around. If you want to just simply move this object a little bit more, you can move this object around. If you want to paint this object, you can come here, pick the paint brush, and pick a desired color of choice. So let's say I'm picking this color. And then I can come through and start making the painting directly here. And uh, by default, you would also notice that once I make a selection of the painting, which uh, of the color which I want, I have an option here if I want to make this metallic or non-metallic. Okay, so I have an option to make it metallic or non-metallic. I also have an option if I want whatever texture I'm painting to be uh, to have roughness or not. Because right now you can still come through and render this using different matte caps that exist here. If we choose PBR, for example, here you can see that we're rendering this as PBR. And this is when we can get that exposure that we couldn't see earlier. So if I come through, I can now increase the exposure or turn it down a little bit. So I think this would be a, a very worthy replacement if you don't have the hardware to, you know, uh, run 
ZBrush or maybe any other sculpting app on your computer and there is also free sculpting apps that you can download off the internet and make use of but if you need something that is web based something that would uh, ease the stress of you know thinking about how much you can spend on the hardware and still give you very comfortable results or uh, maybe some sort of comfortable result then you should think about this and uh, try to try it out and before we go let's just simply take a look at some other features that exist here so if you press w on your keyboard you can see the wireframe you can also mask your object just like you do in zbrush so for example if i want to mask a certain part of my object once i hold down control and start painting you can see i can make that mask and i can also invert the mask okay i can make the mask i can also invert the mask if i uh, you know press e on my keyboard i can be able to bring out the rotate and i can also be able to see the entire gizmo and make use of the gizmo so for something like this we can start making these uh, sort of adjustments so because these is are uh, based off webgl it is something to keep in mind that most times these things might uh they might go a bit crazy they might go a bit crazy if uh you're working my best advice is once you walk in and you get to a comfortable session or you get to something that you really like my best advice is for you to save copies at any point in time when you are working with these tools the reason why i'm saying you should save these copies is for some reason if you don't have a good internet connection or let's say your browser is not so stable the OpenGL may uh, go off at any point, okay? This is just one thing to keep in mind when you're working. It doesn't mean that it happens all the time. It doesn't mean that it happens. It's just something, you know, to keep in mind whenever you're working with uh, tools like this. And now we're done smoothing these edges. Let's take a look at the possibilities of using uh, retopology here or maybe using dynamic topology. So if you want to create dynamic topologies here there are ways you can do that so if you come through to this part where we have topology you can you know just come through here and we can turn this remesh all the way up and so once we hit remesh and press w on our keyboard we are able to see something like this ctrl z works so just in case you're wondering yes there is ctrl z and it works so if i simply come through and just click on uh, remesh here uh, we can see that it's going to go through and remesh this particular tool for us okay and other things that we can see here is we can come through and also remesh using this as well so these are various ways that you can remesh your object and also get uh finer details from them so something like this you will have to come through and also set the setting this is for your voxel remeshing which is uh, basically a manifold form of remeshing and it doesn't really care if you have cords or not but uh, this other one would actually uh, keep the quads in mind when it's doing the remeshing so if we just take a look you can see we can have something like that but if i have something like this and go ahead and you know create something you can now see we have more of triangles so something like this would give you quads why something like this would give you triangles and if you come down here and you activate uh, this you would be able okay so you would be able to let's uh, switch to a different brush let's just quickly switch to a different brush let's clear this out and switch to just a normal brush you would be able to do the dynamic tessellation uh, stuff something that we've seen in uh, both uh, zbrush blender and also in modbox okay so you can do the dynamic tessellation kind of sculpting directly on your web browser and for a tool like this there's just so much things that you can do with it and it's totally free it's on your web browser it's just something you should think about and it's also something that wouldn't uh, cost you anything to you know learn from it it has a wealth of resource files that you can come through and find either of these three tools are just amazing that you can work with but in my personal opinion if you want to get uh the best out of the three of them 
then maybe you should go over and uh, start using the sculpt gl or you can use the strata 3d sculpt and you can go ahead and use the sculpt fab depending on what you want to do so is this a tool which i would advise you to make use of yes of course does it have all of the sculpting capabilities yes does it match zbrush or modbox no it doesn't this tool doesn't match either of them but for the core basics of doing your sculpting and maybe doing your default texturing yes it does those things but there are certain features and very advanced tools that you can find in both zbrush modbox and even blender and on some other 3d apps that you cannot find here you cannot find most of the sculpting or the painting tools that you can find in 3d codes even on this app okay so these are things that you should take with a grain of salt while working with this there is no curve brush so curve brush doesn't work here there is no z guides and there is no um there is no joint guide like you get in uh Modbox, those things don't exist. They have something that looks more like your modeling in Voxel, which is cool, but the way you model in or the way you sculpt using Voxel in 3D code is totally different from how you do that here. The Boolean doesn't really exist, so there is nothing like Boolean that exists here, not which I have found. They have cameras here, and I really wish we can have, you know, this kind of cameras in um, ZBrush, okay? yeah so they have cameras like this you can also go ahead and set up your own cameras in zbrush it's just something i uh, i think you should have an idea about but those things doesn't mean that it suit it, it matches the power of both zbrush modbox or even 3d code it is a tool which you can get off the internet and you know make use of in your browser and other things which i think i would really like to see if there is going to be an update for something like this is there is no proper um lighting okay so you can only light this object from one point yes of course you are not expected to render here which is not something that this app is good at doing there is also no form of layering okay so there is no form of layering which simply means there is nothing like sub tools there is nothing like layers you cannot layer your stuff you cannot also uh, cut your uvs here okay so once you're thinking about making uvs you cannot polygroup those things don't exist here. You cannot paint any of your maps. They don't exist here. These are things that you can find in both Modbox, ZBrush, uh, 3D codes, and even Blender. They don't exist here. So I think I'll call those premium features. But for now, these are the basic things that you can do with an app like this. So this is something I think you guys should think about, try out, and tell me what you think in the comment section is this uh worthy of your time is this something that you would want to invest your time and your resources into just think about it let's say you don't have that computer memory or you don't have that space on your hard drive to install a new application or you're into sculpting or you're just about to get into sculpting and you're trying some way to learn something new without learning a new ui altogether or learning a new tool altogether but you just want to get your stuff sculpted out and maybe ready for 3d printing or showing it on social media for some reason so tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section below and uh, if you like this video simply give it a like and don't forget to share with your friends and if you're new here i would like it so much if you can hit the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on notifications until i come your way again with the news rant updates review tips or tricks or something like this peace